Now, the reason I'm in my old hometown of Adelaide is the AFL's Gather Round. A brilliant idea that they've stolen, effectively, from the NRL's Magic Round. Nine games of footy over four days, all in Adelaide and its surrounds. Eight of the games are sold out. The city's a hub of activity. Hotels are full. Restaurants are booked out. And Nicola Spurrier's overbearing COVID lockdowns and draconian rules are a thing of the past. She's not in the footy, as you remember. So hopefully it's all annoying the hell out of her. I sat down today with the state's premier for just over a year now, Peter Malinowskis. Premier, thanks so much uh, for joining us and congratulations on Gather Round. The vibe around the city is unbelievable. Yeah, there's a good, there's a good vibe in the town indeed, Chris. I mean, that's what we were hoping for, but you know, the big one for us has been that economic motivator. I mean, people forget, um, we've got short memories sometimes as humans. 12 months ago, hospitality in South Australia was still under restrictions. Now this weekend, it's not the fact they're just full, they're full with really high room rates, the yields are great, restaurants are thriving. So the economic objective has been achieved, but for us, the, the big opportunity is to get the nation's attention onto South Australia. We're a smaller jurisdiction, we don't get that often, and we're really enjoying it. Well, it's working. Most of the games are sold out. You've got a lot of visitors here. As I mentioned, the, the vibe is great. This is a, an idea that AFL has stolen or copied yeah. from the NRL. That doesn't happen very often. The <laughs> Magic Rounder uh, yeah. interpreted as the gather round here in Adelaide. You beat New South Wales and Sydney to get this. Yeah. Do you think after this success that other states are going to try and take it away or do you think you can make it an Adelaide, a South Australian thing every year? Yeah, good question. Well, we would love to, is the short answer. But I do think we're in a competitive marketplace. I think the success of this weekend already is going to attract more competition. But, you know, I submit to the AFL, if something works, why would you change it? And I, and I don't know, to speak plainly, I don't know if in Sydney they're going to replicate the crowds we're seeing here in, in Adelaide. Um, the, the challenge I've put out to South Australians, which is, is risky, it's particularly in my line of work, but I've said, let's try and get more people to the Sydney Swans game in Adelaide than what the Sydney Swans can achieve in Sydney. And, I, and there's a half a chance of that on, on Friday night, so we'll see how we go. Well, there certainly, it certainly is. We'll be there, so uh, we'll, we'll add to your numbers. <laughs> now, speaking of Sydney, uh, Chris Menz has just led Labor to victory in that state. You were there campaigning with him more yep. than once. Uh, some of the policy focus seemed to replicate what you did to win government here. Big focus on health and education. Yeah. Are you working very closely with Chris Minns and Labor in New South Wales, more so than perhaps your Labor colleagues in other states? Uh, I think the short answer to that is yes. Um, I get on pretty well with Chris. Um, I think our politics is relatively similar. Uh, we believe that you know Labor should aspire to govern from the centre, remain focused on, on core issues, not sort of graduate into you know, silly debates in the culture wars. And I think Chris is a, a mainstream leader that wants to, you know, deliver outcomes from New South Wales. And, and we've got a similar passion in areas like education, for instance. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get, we get on well together and that sort of is a good start. I mean, I get on well with most of my um, Labor colleagues in the state. But You mentioned the, the, the focus on those human issues, health and education in particular. You had a big focus on health in South yep. Australia to win government, focused on ramping, ambulances yep. ramping uh, at hospitals, yet now that's worse than ever before. Yep, there's a challenge and I think we've got to be honest about it. Um, I'm not one to put my head in, my sand, in the sand on this. Um, but look, there's a range of things that are contributing to it. We are throwing the kitchen sink at it. You only have to look at our state budget to know that. Um, but if I'm frank about it, Chris, um, when you've got a, a Medicare and primary health care system that is literally cratering before our eyes, if people can't get to a GP, they stay at home and get sicker and they end up in the emergency department. Now, at some point as a country, we're going to have to confront the fact that we don't have two health systems. We have one that's supposed to work and we don't have a primary health care system and a hospital system. They should be one system that actually works together. And I think we've got a lot of work to be done there. And in terms of, you know, Chris Minns and, and other Labor colleagues, I think they understand at a state level that, you know, we're going to have to dial up the temperature on this to see some real change. Now, you mentioned you don't like getting sidetracked by silly culture wars and the like, yet your parliament has just uh, passed changes to take gendered language <laughs> out of the standing orders. No more uh, yeah. His Majesty or Her Excellency. This is just silly, isn't it? Doesn't it yeah. rip the diversity out of our language and our culture? Well, first thing is this. The most time I spent on that standing orders issue was actually getting my head around what the parliament was just doing in the lead up to a radio interview I did yesterday on the issue. I, I actually had nothing to do with it. There's a, um, there's a standing orders committee of the parliament. It's, it's bipartisan. 
Um, they meet apparently once every four years and go through the standing orders and they come up with these changes and, and they went through. So it's not exactly the government's energy and effort. That said, I don't think it is particularly problematic. I will still be using gendered language in the parliament. I do every day. Um, so that, none of that is going to change as far as I'm concerned. I think the governor and I here, for instance, I'll still call the governor Her Excellency, but the way it's written in the standing orders, as you appreciate, is a set of guidelines for the parliament that, that is only in written form. Now, I just want to ask you about China. Uh, Daniel Andrews is just back from China. Mark McGowan is heading to China. Anastasia Palaszczuk says she's going to China. Will you be heading there anytime soon? Oh, in due course. Uh, I don't have it planned as it currently stands. Um, I keenly await to see the progress between the federal government and China in respect to those tariffs that have had a, have had a disproportionate impact on South Australia. Um, lobster and seafood, barley, beef, and then the big one, of course, is wine. Um, they have a disproportionate impact on the South Australian economy. So let's wait and see what the progress is on wine. I think there's been some excellent work done by Don Farrell and Penny Wong in this regard with China. Um, and should we continue to see some appropriate progression there, then at some point, you know, it makes sense for me to represent South Australia's interest in China. But as it stands, we've got other priorities. Does that mean that you're waiting for more progress with the federal government, allowing them to lead the relationship with China? Is it a worry that some of these other premiers are actually playing into China's hands by being too eager to re-establish their relations? No, I, I, I don't think so. I think uh, Dan Andrews and Mark McGowan have a responsibility to make judgments about what's in the best interests of their respective jurisdictions, as do I in South Australia. And, you know, we are lucky from a South Australian perspective that the Federal Trade Minister and the Foreign Minister are both South Australians. They're good Australians, but understand the impact this has had on our state. So I'll work with them um, collaboratively, and then when the time is right, and it's in the state's interests, consistent with the national interests, then, then I'll um, hopefully get to travel to China. Have the Chinese invited you? I have spoken to the Chinese Consul General. Um, I haven't received any sort of formal invite, but they've certainly made it keen that at the appropriate time um, they would welcome a so visit from So they've been leading this? They've, they've been suggesting to you that you should go to China oh, rather than fine. you asking them? Oh, no, I wouldn't put it like that. I think it's just the sort of um, frank and, and warm conversation you have at a diplomatic level um, from a sub-national jurisdiction, which we are. And, you know, we understand our role in things, I understand my role in things. I want to represent my state's interests, just as Dan is and Mark is, for the, and Anastasia is. Um, but we're keen to see that progress, particularly around wine, because I've been, you know, as you appreciate, Chris, in the Riverland, I've spoken to grape growers who have had their lives turned upside down by this, and we've got to get the balance right. Speaking of China, I've had a look at that huge consulate that they've got in suburban Adelaide there at Joslin or St Peter's. Are you concerned that that rather large base in South Australia is being used as an espionage base for the defence industries in, this, in South Australia? Well, I haven't received any official advice that would suggest that there is a need to be concerned, Chris. Um, clearly, we place our confidence in our national security agencies to ensure that our national interest is protected, particularly when it comes to secure matters. Um, it is true that in industries such as defence, space and cyber, South Australia is at the leading edge of those industries and that's only going to grow. Now I've no doubt, and I think this is a statement of the obvious truth, I've no doubt um, that China is very interested in the AUKUS activities that are occurring 20 kilometres from where we are now, Chris. Um, and I think South Australia just has to move at you know, light speed to develop that workforce that we know is going to be required to get those nuclear submarines built so we can get them in active service for the Commonwealth as quickly as possible because that is consistent with our national interests, our economic interests, but also in the interests of the region. Sounds like you're very wary then of the Chinese presence here. No, no. Um, the Chinese um, presence in South Australia is welcome in terms of its consulate. We want to have, you know, thoughtful diplomatic engagement. Think about the counterfactual, Chris. Do we really want to live in the world where we don't have thorough diplomatic engagement with the largest country, or the largest, or the country with the largest population and one of the largest economies. Agree, but we've planet. got to be realistic about what other activities they might be interested in here. Well, of course we do, and you know that's why we invest as a country in, in appropriate um, security agencies who do their work. Um, but we want in, engaged diplomatic relations. I have it at a local level, 
Um, there is a big Chinese community here in South Australia. They contribute a lot. They are good, hard-working people who enjoy um, the liberal democracy that we've got here in South Australia and in Australia more broadly. So that's worthy of engagement and actually building around uh, rather than the opposite. Well, thanks for speaking to us. Congratulations again on Gather Round. How many games are you going to get to over the weekend? I'll be at, at least seven. The most important one, though, Chris, is on Saturday night with Port playing, but you enjoy the Crows tonight. I might even, yeah. I might even have a soft spot for the Crows this weekend. You so know, so a few weekends, you've got both Adelaide teams playing in Adelaide, and we can barrack for both of them. All right, we'll get into it. Cheers, mate. Great stuff. Thank thanks. you.